Ho guys, Sujara speaking. Welcome to Bedtime Stories, episode number um, 4 and 14. It's here with you, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, um, the classic story. So let's read it down, shall we? So we got for us. Man. What? If you saw the last episode, it was hilarious um, at the end. But anyway. Seen here is a page from Harmony and Rudolph. Saw it se several pages ago, several episodes ago, of Bedtime Stories. You know what I'm talking about. But anyway. Got a mess from Green Mix. Anyway. This is retold by Fia Feldman. Illustrated by Erwin Marin. Published by Square Fish, New York. Here we go. To make sense anyway, from Rudolph, Curly's, Coach Comet, Dar. This is Darn and Santa Claus. Here we go. Oh, there's more. Okay. And imprint of Macmillan, um, New York City. Anyway. It's copyright, um... Oh, man. 2014. All right, observed. And I got this from, um, the stage musical, uh, back in 2017. Now, this is seen here, and I got this... For Christmas Day, and I want to do this for reasons, but that's just me, of course. Anyway, here we go. We up in the North Pole. Uh, there's a special place called Christmas Town. Okay, family of the reindeers live in the co co cozy caves. Okay, elves work in the factories, making presents for the children, like me. Mm -hmm. In Santa's castle, Mrs. Claus makes sure he eats um plenty of um. Uh, uh, that his holiday suit fits just right. Mm -hmm. Everyone loves living in Christmas Town, except for one year. The we oh, when the weather was so bad, um, the Christmas was almost canceled. Wow, and that was terrifying, you know. In 1964, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer first aired on pub on NBC. As a Joe Electric uh, Fantasy Hour. To make sense in any way. So, and that was, of course, uh, now been later released on VHS, DVD, 4K Blu ray, and the Blu ray, something like that. That was all there. So, there you go on that. Then on CBS, uh, it went, stopped airing broadcast on NBC, went on CBS in 1932. So, there you go on that. Next page. Anyway, one spring, which I talked about in Born Jokes, anyway, it, I was. Winter time, but anyway. Daughter, um, the lead reindeer who loved just pull Santa's sleigh each reindeer, each Christmas, excuse me, anyway. With Cable Plow Papa. Anyway. He and his wife na named their son Rudolph. Anyway. So after the little Rudolph was born, his tiny red nose began to grow. Wow, okay. Great bouncing icebergs, explained Sarah when he saw this. Um, if, if Rudolph's nose continued to grow, Santa said, he will never make up uh, the sleigh team when he grows up. Okay, I don't get that. Anyway, Dara taught Rudolph all the things he uh, taught the young reindeer need to know, especially to beware of the abominable snow monster. All the white... Um, while he hid Rudolph's nose under the cover, and hope it will be someday stop growing. You know, I don't know, but Rudolph is a red nosed reindeer, and I agree millions of percent about Rudolph. He has a shiny red nose, alright. A bobber snow monster? Woo! But you know, that's just me. Next page. Anyway. Ooh, okay. Uh, and the months went by. The elves were busy making t t Christmas toys. Anyway, all the elves loved their work except for one. Hermie ju just didn't have the knack of toy making. Wow. Maybe that's because he dreamed of becoming a dentist for one day. Which I agree with Hermie at this point. Anyway, Hermie does not want to be a dentist. Anyway, they made him feel a misfit among the other, his other elves. Uh huh. Rudolph feels like a misfit as well. Mm -hmm. He didn't like to be the nose cover he had to wear. Mm -hmm. Without it, 
his nose grow as bright as ever. Don was discriminated to keep it that a secret. You know, that was uncomfortable to say, um, it's not comfortable. You know, it makes more sense anyway. And it couldn't breathe very well. So there you go. Next page. Anyway, on the day in the annual Reindeer Games, Rudolph met Carice, a pretty young doll. When Carice said that she liked him, Rudolph was so excited that he flew through the air with joy. Uh huh. Um, that was exactly what the comment the coach was trying to teach the young reindeer. Especially, amazed, everyone was amazed by Rudolph until the nose cover fell off. You know, when young reindeer started laughing, they called him names. My mom. I have to call my mom names, so if she's watching this, I have no idea what to say here. That is so hilarious to me! <laughs> Next page. Anyway. Anyway. All the others were in the years except for Carreras. Okay. Laugh at Rudolph and call him names. Comment said, from now on, we won't let Rudolph join any reindeer games. You kidding me? Anyway. Rudolph went on all by himself feeling sad. At the toy factory, meanwhile, Harley was having trouble as well. Skip Elf practice at, so he can fix Doll's teeth. Speaking, he might fit in better that way, which makes sense anyway. Uh, when the foreman found out, he yelled, Come to Elf practice and learn to wiggle your ears and chuckle warmly and do purporting stuff like that, or you'll never fit in. Four minute up, boss. Hey, out, boss. Was I talk about when I talk about this during Born Jokester? I made jokes about you saying, "A dentist, go home and grieve, slam the door like that," and now you telling me that you can make fun of me? That is unconscious, you know. <laughs> anyway, okay, but Herbie just couldn't. He ran away instead. Whoa. I agree with Harvey one million percent. It is okay. Yeah, if you go back to my boring jokes episode from the twenty nine, um, yeah, back like, weeks ago, you know what? It's on Rumble.com. Go check it out. So it was like, whoa! It didn't make sense in any way. Next page. Anyway, for while Harvey and Rudolph man share their stories, they decided to go off into the real world together. You don't mind my red nose, asked Rudolph. Now, if you don't mind being a dentist, replied Irby. It's a deal, said Rudolph. Now, there are two different versions of that when I talk about a board joke surface of 29. There's fame and fortune, and it's we're a couple of misfits. In the, in the 1964 version, there's we're a couple of misfits. In the 1965 version, there's fame and fortune. Now, I was talking about a board joke earlier. That Lane, a YouTuber named Lane, um, Creations on YouTube, did a, um, let's just how to describe this, um, did a CBS cut of Fame Fortune where all those ads of where a couple of minutes for some reason. I don't know what happened. I watched it on YouTube and it was like, wow. Okay. So I saw some bits of it on CBS and I was, I was like, I loved it, you know. Watch it every year on CBS from 1995 onwards, you know? It makes sense. Anyway, on the first day, they heard the Yabamo Snow Monster's terrible roar. You must have a scene in your nose, cried Herbie. The two friends tr tr try to stay far ahead of the monster. Now, I did a joke based off of that. Um, well, many memes based off of that. Boo, doo -doo, boo. Yeah, and then I want to do a, a episode 29. I just want to do a meme based off of that thunderstruck Sam the Snowman. And when I did that, it was an outtake. I want to do, I'm originally going to do this as a little kid. Um, as originally an outtake for the Reggae Bass version, but they decided not to. 
Oh, and originally, before we go on the next page, I was going to be asked to be part of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer with the four remaining cast members. Jason Morrison, um, Greg Leslie Griffin, Captain Sajic, um, and of course, Phil Moore, who voiced the Weak Airs versions of, the, of Hermie and Rudolph. Unfortunately, those four are alive back then, neither do I. So, so I just thought it'd be a good idea to do something very neat. But unfortunately, Herbie and Rudolph's um, actors' names are Paul Souls, who is Spider Man, and of course, Rudolph Barry May Richards sadly died. And it was shocking to me to say that, but that's just me. Anyway. I want to do a song duet for the, not only the, the for two, but also these with me and the Weekenders characters. That's just me. After the, it's a deal, but it never happened. That's just, it's my dream I had. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to do this part of Born Jokester, but I'll give it to that in, more, in another episode, Christmas episode of Born Jokester. But anyway. Anyway. Soon they met Yukon Cornelius and a dog sled team, okay? Yukon was looking for gold, but he found Rudolph and Herbie instead. Wow. But then Rudolph's growing nose let, let the Bob Snow Monster find them all. Thanks to Yukon, quick thinking. They escaped an ice fall, okay? The ice fall carried them to the Hour of Misfit Toys, a place full of odd toys. You know something? It makes sense, because I want to make sure if it's happening for the whole uh, war. And the memes I made back in Born Jokes episode number 29 weeks ago, I want to do that and say, Oh, Jesus Christ! From the Born Jokes episode, we're off the Red Nose Reindeer. Go check out Rumble, like, like I said before, rumble.com slash the crazy bunch. Check it out. You won't be disappointed. Next page. Anyway, the ruler of the island, King Moon Racer, said, A toy is never happily until it's loved by a child. Okay. We all promised the king that um, someday he would tell Sam about how, all the homeless toys. Maybe Sam would cool them in the Christmas deliveries to children around the world. Good. We all asked King Moon Racer if, we, if his friends would stay on the island of Misfit Toys. This island is not for living things. I agree. Anyway. Said so the king, it's only for misfit toys. Exactly. Anyway. How do I duck? Said Yukon. Even though I'm misfits, you were misfits. I talked about this during Born Jokes episode, but I I just interrupted the whole entire thing when um, but I said this, I you continue on, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what to say, but it just make more difference. I criticize a Born Jokester, but you know, that's me. Kimo Racer, if you're watching this, I have no one to say. It's the voice name is Sam Francis, who died after the Rudolph the Red Nose Ranger special in 1966. And he also voiced Santa Claus. Next page. Anyway. The king let the friends rest overnight. Before they move on. When Herbie and Yukon were asleep, Rudolph slipped away. Okay? Knowing that his nose will put them in constant danger with the unbombable um, snow monster. He don't want to be the cause of any harm in his friends. Thank you. The unbombable snow monster did indeed find Rudolph because of his glowing nose. Okay? He chased the young reindeer right anywhere, huh? Um, during that time, Rudolph grew up. One day he realized it was a time to go home. Uh huh? Makes sense in any way, so it can happen. So they going that it had to be Rudolph going home. There's always tomorrow where dreams come true. Tomorrow it will be a not. It's not far away. Like Query said in the song earlier, voiced by the late Janet Ornstein. Next page. Anyway, Rudolph had an idea where his parents' queries were in the cave, the Bobble Snow Monster. Okay, he made his way there despite the storm and foul curries uh, in the monster's clutches. Yeez. Anyway, 
Put her down, cry, Rudolph cried. Excuse my grammar. The Bible Snow Monster did and went out after Rudolph instead. Well, never seen that coming in the Boring Jokes episode, but this is way off of these. Anyway. Next page. Anyway. Yukon Herbie who have been searching for their friend arrive in their cave just in time. Quickly, they learn the monster outside and knock out him out with a big rock. Then Herbie removed all the monster's teeth. Finally, Herbie got a bit to be the dentist. Thank God that was over. And that was a big misfit. To, and he's not a misfit anymore. He was more of a, um... He was more of a, um... Putting teeth together in the... He's a dentist now, so... And the, uh, it's not a jolly elf. Next page. Anyway. Who are his friends and family... Were heartbroken by the, when they returned to Christmas Town, when the others heard the, the entire story, huh? They realized there, there was, are two, there was, there was different and important as well. They both apologized to Rudolph and Hermie. The foreman even told Hermie he even could open up his own dentist office. Anyway, and Santa agreed to find him home to Misfit Toys. Thank you. It can happen any time now, so. It makes no sense in any way, so they go on that. It can make difference in any way, so to make difference in sense. Next page. Anyway. Just then there was a knock on the door. It was Yukon. You, you know some I wanna make an other scene. I forgot to make an other scene of the basic Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer. I'll do it in another episode. I'll do it in Boring Jokester soon, but Right now, it's just something really different. But anyway, his dogs and the abominable snow monster. Okay, even though they have all gone over the cliff, okay, uh huh, the abominable snow monster was able to bounce, and so they had to all land in safety. Uh huh. Now the monster was no longer mean. Thank God. Anyway, he even got a job. He placed a star at the top of the Christmas tree. Everyone cheer. It's like, no, nah! but you know that doesn't make sense anyway. It makes more difference anyway. So, has the teeth missing? Good enough. So there you go. Next page. Anyway, slit. Oh, no, no, no. That's not the next page. Come on. Anyway, the next day was Christmas Eve, but the weather was so bad. That Santa could not fly his sleigh safely through it. The company sh star started to tell everyone that Christmas was going to be cancelled. For the t first time ever. Yeez. Anyway. But they realized that there was a way through the that storm after all. Rudolph said, Sarah, you and your wonderful nose of yours. That nose cut through the murky storm. What I try to say is. Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Rudolph replied, It'll be an honor, sir. To make more sense with Rudolph's shiny red nose. Good figure, Rudolph. And Santa. Next page. This will be the final page of the book. Final page of the book said this. The sleigh was loaded. The Nate Reindeer got into place. Santa climbed aboard. Rudolph took the lead. Um, and Slay took off, sent for Santa for a stop, the hours been to the toys, everyone had an extra Merry Christmas that year, and Rudolph went down history as the greatest reindeer of all time. And that's the end of the book, ladies and gentlemen. So, to make more sense anyway, and sorry that it's boring while I'm taping, and same as I tape, boring jokes episode first, this is the final episode of boring jokes episode at that time frame. It was difficult, so very going to die. I have to make this make sure it happens. Last page was Rudolph, and it has to be this drawing. And that was Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer, the classic story. What do I think about this book? It was amazing. So far, this book was a success. And that was Better Up Stories, episode number uh, 4 and 14. Hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned, next is going to be um, Elf. Let me see. Yeah, the next one is Elf, Pops Crossley Edition. It has to do with this whole Santa! 
Oh my god! Yeah, that one. Okay? Okay, that makes more sense anyway. Until next time, Flu Jazz Bob's the baby. More bedtime stories episodes will be still. So, out. See ya.